Hey everybody, in this video we're talking about monopolies and price ceilings. And the reason we are is monopolies mean pricing power. And when we get that pricing power, that's when the government may be tempted to step in and control the price. Now I think what we should probably think about in this video in the real world are situations where we see excessive market power. That's where we have a, a monopoly over something and there are no co-substitutes. What I like to think about is perhaps we've got a firm, a private sector firm that owns a bridge that connects to an island. And the only way that you can get to that island is that particular bridge or another firm maybe it just has a toll road and the only way to get from the suburbs to downtown in an efficient manner is that toll road or maybe we can think about pharmaceutical good where a, for a pharmaceutical company has a patent again i think what's best to do is to think about excessive market power because when you have a lot of market power guess what you have a lot of pricing power all the more the government may think about coming in and regulating the price now one of the things that's most interesting as we go through this video is when you talk about price ceilings in competitive markets, economists are generally pretty leery of that. They, they don't really love that. And one of the big reasons is price ceilings in competitive markets lead to a decrease in the quantity supplied, okay? So we get less of the good being provided. However, what is so interesting is when you do a price ceiling, there is an, in, a, in a situation with excessive market power, a lot of market power, you actually have a chance of increasing the output. That's right, a price ceiling can increase the output. And that's what we're gonna see in this particular video. So I've got my graph right now. I've just got a monopoly, no regulations right now, and no price discrimination. You got the MR twice the slope of the demand curve. Now, if we wanted to find output and price, what we do is go to MRMC, right? That's where they intersect. That gives us the output. Take the output up to the demand curve, and that would be the price. And why is that? Why do you take the output to the demand curve? Because basically what you're saying to yourself as a student is what's the maximum the price can charge to sell this level of output, okay? Remember, the output divided by MR is decided by MR equals MC. And therefore, what can, what's the maximum you can charge and sell that level of output? Well, that's what the demand curve tells you. It tells you the maximum price you can charge to sell that level of output. So you just take that output right on up and that's the price. That's how it would work in an unregulated market. But now we're going to have the government come in and regulate the price with a price ceiling. Okay. Now the interesting thing is as long as that price ceiling is binding, the price ceiling becomes the MR curve. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard to understand. It's actually pretty straightforward. As long as the price ceiling is binding, that means if I want to sell one more good, as long again, as long as the price ceiling is binding, I'm going to charge the price ceiling price for every good that I sell. Again, as long as it's binding. And if that's the case, that's the marginal revenue. Because what is marginal? revenue it's the additional revenue that the firm gets from selling one more product the additional revenue they get from selling one more product and of course if the price ceiling is binding they're getting that price the price ceiling price every time they sell another good hence the price ceiling becomes the MR curve that is really important so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid not completely I'm gonna leave a little remnant of it of this curve because this is no longer gonna be the MR once I bring in that price ceiling all right I am leaving a little remnant and you'll kind of see why in, in, in a little bit and plus I also want to just have a little place where I can see that original output level when there is no regulation now the place I'm gonna put the price ceiling originally and this video is gonna get a little messy towards the end but it's gonna be pretty straightforward um, here at the beginning so stay with me all right but the price ceiling we're saying AP test would generally want to put the price ceiling and that would be where the MR I'm sorry where the demand and the MC curve intersect okay so that's where they love to put that price ceiling and the reason is with that price ceiling we're gonna actually increase output and actually eliminate all dead weight loss I'll show you that in just a second if you're not with me so they're gonna put that price ceiling where demand and MC intersect but I also want you to understand when I put this right in here this is now also my MR curve, right? The price ceiling is my MR. But once I get to demand, if I wanted to sell another uh, unit of the good, I'm gonna have to lower the price, right? And therefore this price ceiling would no longer be bi binding. I'd have to lower the price. And what's interesting is once you hit that demand curve, you can now take that MR curve straight down to your old MR curve. That's right. This is now the MR curve once the price ceiling goes into effect. I know that's a bit confusing. I'm gonna say it again. It's, it's really pretty straightforward. As I said, the price ceiling is now the MR curve. It has to be as long as it's binding. But again, if we wanna sell one more product, okay, once we get to this dot, 
one more product, we're gonna have to lower the price for everybody. We're assuming no price discrimination. So if I lower that price, I go below the price ceiling. Now that price ceiling has no effect on the, on the market. So what now is at play is both demand and the original MR because we're back on the original demand curve. So you just drop down to that original MR. So there it is. That is your MR curve once that price ceiling is put in place. Hopefully that made sense to you. It's really pretty straightforward. The biggest thing is that price ceiling has become MR all the way to demand. So now you've got MR and MC intersecting right here. So guess what? This is now your level of output. That's right, that's what your output's gonna be. And we know as long as there's no externalities where MC and demand intersect, that's where MSC and MSB intersect, that is our Q-opt. And we just got rid of all the dead weight loss. And what I mean by the dead weight loss, remember, get rid of the price ceiling. Go back to that original MR that you can kind of see a remnant of. That's where MR and MC used to intersect. So this was my output. And so this triangle right here used to be my dead weight loss. But my output has increased from Q profit maximization in an unregulated situation all the way to right there. That's one of the basic, most interesting aspects of thinking about price ceilings where you have market power is they can lead to increases in output, at least in the short run. Now, I do want you to know that economists do still have, or many economists, not all, but many economists still worry about the long-term implications of these price ceilings and the distortions it may bring to incentives in the marketplace. I just want to put that out there. But in the short run, yes, this price ceiling has the opportunity to perhaps increase output. Okay, so that was the main parts of the video. I hope you watched that. I hope you got those. Those are the main parts of the video. Now we're just going to get a little bit messy, okay? So what I mean by that is I'm going to start bringing in some different price ceilings, and that's how we're going to end this video, okay? So what we might see is a price ceiling a little bit higher. So if you saw it a little bit higher, it'd go right to there. As soon as I hit the demand curve, I drop down to that MR curve. Now what's interesting is you can see why I like to do that drop down portion, right? Right? So this is now my MR. This is the price ceiling. This is a new instance. Well, look at where MR and MC intersect. They intersect right there. Okay, so now my output is right there. What that means is my output actually increased. I don't know if you could still tell, but the old output was right there. That's where the old MR and MC used to intersect. That's the old output. I got more output, but I didn't get all the way to Q-opt, right? I did not get all the way to Q-opt. All right, so that would be that price ceiling, okay? Now you're taking the test and they put the price ceiling in yet a different place. So now we're gonna put the price ceiling right here and go all the way to the demand curve, drop down. So get rid of that blue part. So now that is my MR curve, but I still use the same situation of looking for MR equals MC. Here's my MR equals MC. So that's my level of output. And yes, output still increased. I don't know if you can tell, but there's that old MR line, right? That old output, and you saw that output increase right there. So we got more output, but remember, you're always looking for MR equals MC. So there's my MR. Well, MR hits MC right there. That's it. That's my level of output. Finally, I want you to know that if we get very aggressive with this price ceiling, if we get very aggressive with the price ceiling and really bring that uh, maximum price down, output could decrease, okay? So let's go ahead and put a price ceiling right here. Take that price ceiling. Shh, have to go way over here to get to that actually MR curve. Okay, we're kind of erase that so that MR goes all the way. That doesn't even really matter. Don't even need that part because look, this is what's important is MR is now hitting MC right there. So here's my output one last time, right? That old remnant of the MR curve right there. That was my output um, in an unregulated situation. So now I've actually got output decreasing. I've got dead weight loss actually increasing because I got very aggressive with my price ceiling. So if I get too aggressive with that price ceiling, output could actually go down. It doesn't have to be that output's going to go up when I put that price ceiling and I've got market power. One more time, these are basically short run results, okay? Yes, we can increase output in the short run. We, the long run's fuzzier because of the incentive effects of this price ceiling. So we just want to put that out there. Oof, if you watch that whole thing, I hope it made sense to you. I hope you've kind of mastered price ceilings and monopolies. It's, it's really straightforward. It's not that hard. The big thing is the price ceiling generally becomes the MR curve. Hope to see you in the next video.